and welcome. Today we're going to talk about kids, it's the most precious thing that we own. And of course, we're going to talk about sex. Sex is something that is difficult to talk about because basically that's where we came from, that's the way we are right. So I want you to bear with me. So I'm going to ask you a question that will raise some concern. When you think of kids, sex, and parents, what comes to mind? What comes to mind when we think of kids, sex, and parents? Pregnancy. Eh? Pregnancy. What else? Big challenge. Eh? Big challenge. I like that. What else? Big challenge. Big challenge. I, I would say in one word is trouble. That's it. Challenges. So I want you to think this way. In order to give you some idea of what I'm thinking about is, I'm going to give you a story. If you actually about a year and a half ago, a parent approached me and he basically said, I want to ask him a question. Or he was actually telling me a story. So he said that he had a boy, I'm not going to tell you how old he is, and the boy came to him and said, Dad, I know what my hand is used for, my legs used for, and how about, and he said, a street name for his penis. I can't say it in church, of course. And the parents said, what is this? He said, he gave him another name. And the parents said, we still don't know what is this. So anyway, he pointed at it and said, oh my God, don't ever think about this. Don't touch it, don't even touch it. And he gave his little boy a mouthful of everything that you can imagine. So the kid said, okay, Dad, fine, I'm sorry. And he disappeared. Two weeks later, he came to him and said, Dad, I went to a friend of mine and went to the internet and I found everything I need to know about this. So if you need any help about this thing, let me know. Very <laughs> cool. <laughs> I want you to think about that. How old is this kid, do you think? 11? Maybe 8 years old. 8 years old. So let us basically analyze what's happening. When your child comes to you and asks a question about sex, and you react this way, what happened in the child mind? Yeah, of course, he is not going to ask again. I can assure you that. That's number one. And if he's not going to ask you, who, who do you think he's going to ask? His friends. Now, what do we do as a parent? What else? What else can we analyze in this situation? What else? Avoid us. He's going to avoid talking to his friends. Not only about sex, but everything else. Because you already did not. Teach him anything. What else? The guy lost respect for his dad. He doesn't know what he knows. When I come to you, he doesn't know. So I'm going to give up on you. What else? You can talk about this for, for days. The problem is the kid now is going to afraid to be afraid of talking about sex with anybody. I actually will afraid of sex in general and that would have a major impact on his life in general and of course future marriage in general and on us. That's a major impact that we as people don't think of and we need to keep that in mind every time our kids approach us with a question. Please remember that. It's very important. So, who do you trust most to teach your kids about sex? Parents, school, or media? Parents. Parents, of course. But here is the challenge. <coughs> Many of our parents are not comfortable talking about sex with their children. And I can understand that. There are many reasons for that, of course. Uh, one of them, of course, is knowledge. Who has the knowledge? I talk to my kids about it. I don't have 
the carriage to talk to my kids about. I don't know how to approach my kid. And so on. And again, I want you to remember the way we were raised. Sex is something that we don't talk about. It. Something great, something is not good, something and so on. And of course, that actually, I, I, I read a very interesting article about six or eight months ago talking about, actually, unfortunately, it was talking about people from Egypt. And I, and um, this and that, and yeah, whatever I wrote it here, he wrote it. It was very truthfully written, but it's very good. Anyway. So the answer, of course, is. Sexuality, education for parents. So the answer that we find in the church that we need to teach parents a little bit about sex and what does it mean and how good is sex? God created sex. God will never create something bad. Sex is or sexuality is part of us. So we need to keep that in mind all the time. This is not my topic tonight, but we will talk about it. So basically, the goal of this presentation is to make you aware, create an awareness of the dangers that our kids are facing all the time. Clarify the roles and responsibilities of the parents, school and church. A few days or a few weeks ago I was talking to a couple of parents and I was talking about who's responsible to educate the kids about sex. Oh, that's a church. It's not parents. Who's responsible, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Parents, number one. And I tell you, first of all, in the church, you only see the kid maybe half an hour a day, half an hour a week, yeah. one hour a week. The school, they teach you something else. I'll okay, tell you more about that. I need to find, basically, I'm going to talk about what is the church doing to support you, support your kids. And finally, uh, so I, I want you to support and protect your kids. So we want to protect your kids from sexual abuse at school, in the streets, from friends, from relatives. That's very important. Bad influences by the kids at school. Quite a bit of bad influence there. I can talk about that. Misconceptions. There's a lot of misconceptions out there that we really need to keep in mind. And you know, you will be surprised how much your kids know. You will be surprised. Even six years old. Even six years old. They know quite a bit. Maybe some stuff, maybe you don't know yourself. Right. Since we started this about a year and a half ago now, right? so I have every opportunity, I talk to kids, I talk to parents, and so on. So I find out. And again, this meeting is also my problem. So our agenda today, we're going to talk about the challenging that's facing you, uh, some statistics, really worrisome, uh, very alarming statistics. We're going to talk about the Bracta Sex Education Curriculum. We're going to talk about the work that we are doing. CSET, this is Christian Sexuality Education Team. We have a team of 12 very hard workers. What, anybody here? One, two, three, four, four of us, or five, working very hard for you, or about 18 people working for you, just to help out. We're going to talk about the cooperation between the church and the parents. What's the church plan to support you, give you more information, give you uh, uh, as many lectures as we can, to give you some uh, facilities over the internet and so on. I'm going to ask you some questions. And of course, we can answer any questions that you may have. So as parents, we, have, we, we supply our kids with schooling, the clothing, things into music, football, soccer, and all this. Now we can add one more big responsibility to your plate. I want you to start educating them from sexuality point of view. Not sex, but sexuality. We're talking about what does sexuality mean. It means a lot of things. Okay? So here's a question that I really need you to 
sake of our regular group here. What happens if you don't teach your kids about sexuality? Here's number one. They will talk to the wrong people. They will go to school and talk to somebody else. They will they are old enough to go to the internet. Like this guy is eight years old. He went to a friend that took him to the internet. The guy doesn't even read for God's sake. But he was able to get the information. So he he was smart enough to go to somebody else. Turn, uh, of course, to internet for answers. They will accept abuse. Why? They don't know that it's harmful. They don't know the concept about abuse. It's harmful to them. That's true. What else? We can try. No, but they, they are afraid to talk to their parents. That's a real reason. We need to teach our kids if something happens to son or daughter, come and talk to me. But if you react the way this guy reacted, he will never come to you. So he will keep it himself. That's it. And actually, I, 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 I have been reading so much about this the last year. And there are so many stories where the kids were subject to abuse and he did not report it. Until later, about two years later. And they asked me why, so I can't talk to my parents about this. So we need to create an environment at home where the kids feel safe to talk to us. That's very important. I'm going to talk about that in later lectures. But I want you to think. And of course, every home, every family has its own environment. So I want you to think. How can I create an open connection between me and my kids so they are comfortable coming and talking to us? Same sex relationship. I, a friend of mine came talk to me about uh, his uh, son. He said, uh, like his son, about 15, 16. And he said, he started looking at girls. I said, and how can we stop that? I said, what? Well, you should rejoice. As far as I'm looking at boys, so it's just true. If he comes to and say I'm looking at girls, or girls are looking at boys, there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong feeling the tendency to talk to girls or boys, different sexes. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to monitor and control. So if you <coughs> kick him, if you say I'm looking at girls, now next time you have a Nobody will say anything about that. So we need to be very sensitive to how do we treat or deal with our kids. The other thing that really is very important, and this will last a lifetime, is that kids will have the wrong impression about what sex is or what sexuality is and what impact it has on them. Going to manage with the wrong impression. This I have seen so many cases from psychologists and so on, that this sexuality business comes up from them when they were so young and stay with them for the rest of their life. Fear and anxiety about sex, of course, turn into porn if you cannot, and especially adults, when they don't want to perform or are afraid to perform or they get excited to perform, they turn into porn. We'll talk about that later on. The issue of those, and I want you to recognize that and be aware of it, our kids at age 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on, they are curious. They have questions. And they want some answers. They are sometimes are very concerned. I'm getting hair everywhere. What does that mean? So we need to prepare them, especially girls. We, need, we don't want them to get a shot when you see some blood coming out. What's going on? So we as parents or mothers have to prepare them two or three years ahead of time. Because you don't know when these things come. The same thing is boys. So we have a responsibility as parents to do that. And we need to have some answers and so on. They may not get the right answer if they get it from somebody else. So please be in control of your kids. Make sure that they are getting the right answer. And the only way to do that is for you to give them the right answer. So things are much worse than we see. 
I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So three questions I want you to think about right now, before anything. Where do you think your kids are getting information from right now? <coughs> TV. You trust TV? Internet. Internet, most of the time. What else? Street. What else? Friends in school. Friends in school. All of them, which is a very bad source of information. The second question, what kind of school, what friends do your kids have? Do you know what kind of people do they have? Think about that. If you mess up a long time ago, birds or feathers flock together. Find out who's, what kind of kids does he have or she have? You need to think about that. I'll tell you a story. It was uh, actually uh, told by my mother, one of the mothers in, in Ontario was giving this presentation there. And she came and she was talking about her daughter, two daughters. She was upstairs. And she noticed that the room, the room was very quiet. No problem. Next day, it disappeared as well. So she went to open the door. Five, two girls have a whole movie on. And they are watching it. She said, what is going on? Of course, she was very upset. And she did exactly the same thing as this guy. Is that the right approach? Of course, that's a wrong approach. We need to know how to plan these things. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at, uh, she asked the two kids, where did you get information from? Oh, Jackie, she gave it to a what? And of course, if Jackie gave it to Jackie's mother, and it was a big issue. But that's not the right thing. She stopped giving them internet access, she stopped having a computer. They can go to somebody else. So you need to think, what your actions will do. What are the sexual activities teens are engaged in these days? Do you know? You will be surprised. So you, not, you need to start opening your eyes now in a very smart way. In a very smart way. Here's the third pattern. This is actually some of my uh, personal advice. Don't stop teaching your kids too soon. What does that mean? I was talking to a friend of mine, his son is 16. And he said, that's it. He's 16, he can do whatever he wants. What? You have to monitor this guy. You have to monitor, you have to watch what they're watching, you have to ask them, you have to talk to them, and so on. We're going to talk more about that in, in uh, further lectures. Just because your child made a good choice so far, it doesn't mean that you will continue to make good choices. What does that mean? Talk to me. He can decide to try to do something else. What I want you to recognize that kids are subject to great pressure at school from other kids. Think about that. Although my kid is good and he is nice and so on. The kids at school, they pressure them. It's a lot of pressure. Peer pressure is terrible. So you really need to be aware of what kind of kids he has and what kind of peer pressure he has received from somebody else. If you do not teach your kids about sex, of course, somebody else will. Talk about that. Remember peer pressure, that is a major influence on your kids. So, Please, as parents, we need to be a role model. We're going to have an hour and a half presentation on how can you, how can you, as a parent, be a role model for your son and daughter. I really want you to consider this seriously. Pray for it in your prayer. As you pray, pray that God will guide you and guide the church in helping you. We need the prayers because we cannot do it alone. A lot of work and a lot of work for you as well. So, here's some sources for your kids where they, of course, the school education system. I'll talk about, more about that. Of course, the school education system, what do they teach at school? Safe sex. Safe sex, that's it. What does that mean? Go ahead and do whatever you want. 
as long as we make it safe. No pregnancy, no disease, that's it. That's what they teach. And this is what your kid is, is listening to almost on a daily basis. Friends, the worst example. Magazines are stolen. Look at the magazines. Look at the advertising everywhere. Basically, they are talking about how to look your best so the other sex will look at you. That's, that's what they use for advertising. That's what they use. <coughs> Books, TV stations. You can't find any TV station without reference to sex in almost in every program. Movies. Advertising. Talk about that. Internet. about porn and about women and about this. You, you, I'm bombarded with all this information because I use the word. So they 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 bombard you. Media, radio station. I was listening to a radio station. Somebody actually told me about it. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. They there's a show every day that a lot of questions for news and they talk I, 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 I have trouble listening to it, not even seeing it. The woman, she explained in a very explicit language what to do, what to do, what to do. Wow, and he's talking to kids 10 years old. 10 years old. And she got very smooth, no problem. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And that's wow. If that's, what, if that's the kind of information we're getting, university grounds. I'm sure some of you maybe want to address what they have sex week. We, I, 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 uh, I got a report from somebody who's a secret master university. I'm not sure about the right the name of the university, it's not correct. But anyway, one university in the East, they had uh, a one week sex uh, week or whatever it is, and they brought those kind of advertisements about. And once the, the show finished, they had almost over a thousand kids just walking the ground and shouting all the street names of sex and just it was so bad. I listened to it and said, what kind of university is this? And it's all in the name of freedom. All in the name of freedom. So we need to be aware of what's going on. Online games, the worst thing that can do. Free games, kids put on it, and they ask the kids, you know, what is your name? Don't give me your name, don't give me, that's just, I, I don't know what it is, just give me your phone number, or I'll give you my phone number. So anyway, they get all the kids and then they offer the problems. So please be aware of what's going on behind all this. So it's a little more, more, a little more. There is no place to go now. Like I was going to visit my wife in her uh, office, and I go up the elevator. There is a, a big picture of a naked woman, almost naked. And it says, in an office environment. So we have to be aware of what's going on. So all these sources, they all have a common message that you are hammering into your kids. Everybody is doing it. At school, they ask it, why, how come you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Everybody is doing it. How come you are different than other people? We have, <coughs> we have to give our kids good reasons why we are not going for this. Uh, if you are not sexually active, then you are probably gay. That's what they tell you. If you don't have a boyfriend, then you are a lesbian. That's it. If you don't have a girlfriend, then you are gay. Those are what is repeated on a daily basis at the school or everywhere you go. And I want you to be aware of those things. I want you to be ahead of the game.
especially when you have young kids. We need the whole idea of church training is we're going to train you to train your kids before the school. So before the school start teaching them, you teach them at home. Then when you go, when they go to school, they can differentiate. This is what Paul is telling me, and this is what the school is telling me, which one is right. And hopefully that you give him uh, the right information in the right way, then he will, of course, believe that you are right. And I can tell you for, example, for sure, if you get first to the kid's brain, that's where the information will stay. That's what the information will stay. That's for sure, yes. When is the right time? The right time for what? Like to start discussing this with the kids. From six months? Six months, one year. The thing is, you have to make it age appropriate. For example, if you have a boy and girl at home, you don't let the boy go in the washroom with a girl. You have to separate them. She needs a private. This what she's doing is private. What he is doing is private. So they start. They start to recognize that yes, there is a difference. I have a situation where the girl came and said, How come her brother is with her? Now answer that. She looked at his brother, it's different. Why? Now we are provided with all these answers and, and a question and answer. Uh, it could be the answer, so we need to know. Uh, being, okay, being sexually active makes you a better sexual partner. Of course, that's part of it. The more partners you have, the better you are. That's not true. It makes good marriage. As a matter of fact, they have a survey about people that divorce, and they ask them. I think 70% of the divorced people have sexual relationship before the marriage. So obviously, it doesn't help. Obviously, it doesn't help. But we have to teach our kids that you have to be to have sex. You can do without. Again, that's all advertising. It's all. This is not truth. This is not truth. Uh, piece of information. So you have to be aware. We have to be aware of that, and you have to start teaching your kids and responding. You need to start talking to them before they start asking the questions. That's very important. You need to know how to respond to their questions before even asking the question. Because they talk at, at, at school, they talk about everything. And believe me, they spend eight hours there, they spend maybe one hour or two with you. Once you have sex, you can't stop. That's not true. Uh, being sexually active shows that you are not a little boy anymore. Oh wow, this I really want to grow up. And one of the signs of growing up is doing that. Of course that's not true. One way to express your love to somebody. There is so many other ways of expressing love to somebody else. Sexy baby is, is not the right way. So those are the messages that your kids are getting from the internet, from the school, from other TV shows, from, like, you know, I was watching a TV where a girl just met a boy about a week ago. A day later, she had sex with him. As a little girl watching that, it's, it's okay. You know, I mean, she knew him for a week. That's long enough. So we have to be very careful of the messages that our kids are exposed to. And one way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more about it, but one way is to basically use those instances as a teaching moment. If you are watching a movie with your kid and then something like this happens, stop and say, what do you think about the next time? What's happening? She's having sex with somebody that she just met a week ago. Is that right? And that's how we start discussion. But you need to have a good relationship with your kids.
before you are able to do that. Here's the very challenge. Children are starting to go through puberty much younger than what we used to. Did, did you notice that? I don't think that when I was 18, I didn't even know that I was this much. That kids know about six years old. And they start growing and start developing. So keep that in mind. They are exposed to everything under the sun. So be careful of all this. Some school teachers should be ready to answer sexuality questions. Please. How many Sunday school teachers have here? One, two, three. I have one school, school teacher. <laughs> she she's not from here, but anyway, uh, I think it was very good. She told me a story, a very interesting story. <coughs> she went to some school uh, class. She was not her teacher, so she told them, uh, "I don't have a class to prepare for you. What would you like to talk about?" So they said, and they said, so one guy raised his hand and said, "I was sitting behind." one boy and he was talking to two girls and they agreed that they're going to meet some place and they're going to do this and that and so on and I really would like to do that. Is that okay? She, she said, I was stunned. I didn't know what to say. So as some school teacher we need to be prepared to answer those questions. Not only answer them, also encourage them. If they have a question in their mind, encourage them to bring it out. Then you can respond to it, you can act on it, and of course, you can monitor it as well. So, here's some uh, very alarming surveys I got from the internet and actually from very good sources. Look at this, at age 15, 20% have actual sex with girls or boys. By the time you get to 22, almost 90% have actual sex with others, uh, other side of the other part of the social. Very alarming. Very alarming. Look at this, grade 9, 23% male, 18% female have sex as well. It's almost the same. This is a different source. This is actual Canadian source, this was an American source. And again, what applies to American applies to us as well. 80% of the Christian college students in Canada have practiced sex. 80%. When they ask them, is that right or wrong? This is wrong. Think about that. So then, does anybody know what sexting means? Yes. How many? One. One, two. Anybody else? Three. Sexting is when a person sends a picture of his private parts to his friends. to compare, to see how good it is, and so on. It is sad. It is sad. Look at this. Elementary school, 5%, sad. Uh, grade 10, 11, is getting, of course, higher and higher as you grow. What is this? I was talking to a girl that sent her picture to her friend, and she, she was and she didn't care to admit it. She said, yeah, I did. I said, is that okay? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? She's my friend. I said, how? What do you think she's going to do with this picture? She said, nothing. She's just for her information. I said, that's it? <laughs> she's my friend. She, she actually was mad at me. But she said, yes, she's my friend. I, sh I can share anything with her. I said, oh my God. What do we learn from this? We need to teach our kids how to choose their friends. What does a friend mean? She's friend today. How about tomorrow? Maybe she's not going to be your best friend. Think about that. This is bad. This is. I was talking to my brother who is in the States. 
and uh, this is about four months ago, and he said those nude pictures of kids is everywhere in the States. Everybody is sending to everywhere. What? And the other thing that she said that it doesn't have my name on it, so I'm what? No, okay. Another major challenge for us as parents is pornography. Pornography is a major challenge for kids and of course for us as parents. Look at this. Again, pornography, this is not only kids but everywhere. So we have 42 million sites. 42 million sites are available. That's 12% of the total websites available on the internet. That's a lot. That's a lot. <coughs> Look at this. Pornography downloads per month. 1.5 billion. Which is, Look at this, 65% of all the downloads. Can you imagine? 65% of all the downloads are related to pornography. That's how bad things are. Okay. And it's impacting our kids. And of course, impacting us, impacting our own family. Look at the last one annual internet pornography sales $5 billion per year. And of course, our kids are subject to this. Ninety percent of eight years to sixteen years old children have viewed pornography online. Ninety percent. Think about that. Here are some evaluations of a comprehensive sexual health education program in school, and basically the program says that it is helpful to postpone the first sexual intercourse. Postpone is a key word. Postpone it. So instead of doing today, we'll do it next month. So we'll do it next month, we'll do it next year. But we don't really have anything against it. That is the issue. That is the issue. Again, uh, evaluation of abstinence uh, program, they said it's ineffective in actually reducing that. I don't know. Here's some good news. Youths have reported that they do not trust the internet. Wow, that's good news. In providing accurate information about where. But they will use the internet to verify what you are telling them. Remember that, that's very important. And if that is the case, let's build on this. This means that they trust us more. Look at this. More good news. Studies show that adolescent sexuality is most influenced by parents. I love this. See, this slide can, we should frame it. So we can influence our kids if we know how to do it right. And that is really the core of subsequent presentation is we want to teach you how to handle those issues with your kids. That is really the the main focus of the church program, the church Christian program, is to help you focus on this. Then you can have that influence that is already there. This is a survey that says that we as parents has more influence on the kids than the peers and so on. If we do it right, if we have it right, if we give you the information in the right form, in the right time, very important. So ask parents, let me ask you a question. Are you giving your children guidance? Oops. Are you giving the children guidance that they need to avoid the sex trap? I, I call it a trap So don't have the answer to this question, but I would say that most parents are not. If you are, great, I would like to learn from you. If you have any good experience, please share it with me and I will share it with everybody else that is in confidence for sure. But most parents are not doing a good job. For whatever reason, as we discussed before. Here's what the Bible tells us. Ephesians 6.4 
to fathers, to, and I can say also mothers, do not frustrate your children. Instead, bring them up in a training and instructions of the Lord. So it is your responsibility as a parent to do that. It's not the church, it's not the school. It's your responsibility. So please make sure that you meet your responsibilities. Now I have a question for you. Are you surprised with all this information? Talk to me now. I need a break. Yeah. Who's surprised? One, two, the rest is not. Okay? That's good news. At least you know. You know. My question is, are, what are you doing about it? If you know, most of you know, what are you doing about it? Here is what I got from, uh, this is at least eight months ago. He said, well, I don't have to worry because my kids are raised in the church environment. How true is that? Very eh? wrong. Very wrong. Anybody else? It's not true. Anybody? Talk to me. I, I, I want to hear from you. Yes. That's, that's true. That's true. What else? What else? It's one source, but it's not enough. Yes, it's one source. That, here is here is a here is a problem. I, I was, actually I heard that over the internet, one of the shows. It, was, uh, it came from a priest. What the priest was saying, telling a story. Said a, a young woman came to her. Uh, she was crying. And she told him her daughter, which is 16 or 17 years old, decided to leave home and go and live with her daughter. And she was so upset because she said, we raised our daughter in the church from the time she was born and baptized until today. Why would she do that? And his answer, why? I think what we are doing now is the best thing. Because if we start opening this discussion with our kids in the church earlier, then we will not be on the afraid as before about our kids. Yes, that's true. true. This environment here in Sunday school, if we start opening dating, sexual issues, something like that, that would prepare them as a group to have that uh, the good manner of the school. Right, right. And, and, and start as early as you can, as early as early if, if they are eight years old. Start, start, because you know I, I think I heard that from another parents or one of the questions. But by the way, we our point of like our team will start collecting questions from parents and we will find answers and get Abuna to agree to the answer and so on. And we're going to put all these questions on the internet. So we'll put the internet by age and then you can go to the internet if your kids are 10 years old or 15 years old you'll find all the questions that relate to that which is really good but that, that's all i'm asking you if you have any questions or if your son or daughter approaches you with a question please pass it on to any of our guys i think who put an answer maybe you can put your hand up here put your hand up one two put your hand okay green and so on so please talk to those people, give them, we are collecting it and we are answering it and we are putting the internet. So the priest continued to talk to this woman and explain to her why her daughter is experiencing it. The issue really is the power of impression. The power of impression. He said, how often do you talk to your kids about sex? She said, maybe once in the last year. He said, how much do you think? She is getting messages at school, from TV, from movies, from books, from a story. So she is constantly hammered with all those sex ideas and openness and going and speaking with somebody else or doing this. And she never heard it from you. And I'm just 
so, again, so much what, what you brought up, uh, doctors, was quite true. And we need Dr. Naya raised, he said, we need to talk to them. So talk to them openly. Not only in the church, at home as well. Then at least there is a balance. And talk to them as early as you can. Then your ideas get into the brain first. I, I have a very good story actually. And Lamina said it in, in, in our meeting. He, he said uh, there was a boy, yes, what, 10 years old or 11 years old, he went to school and they were teaching him in Egypt, teaching them uh, 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 Jesus is a prophet. So the son, when the guy went up and said, no, Jesus is God. So the teacher said, sit down, this is wrong. He said, no, I'm not going to sit down, Jesus is God. And, and she couldn't stop him. Why? Why a young kid at this age would do that? Let's see what that. He was raised right. He, it is ingrained in his brain that Jesus is God. It, it, it went there first. Now imagine if he did not that have ingrained in his brain. He will accept what the teacher says. Obvious. So again, that gives me a really good example that we need to start planting the seeds of good values in our kids. When is your time? Plant the good information about Christianity, about values, about sex, about all this stuff. Then when they are encountering opposing opinions, they will reject it. Maybe if not openly as this kid did, I hope they will, but they at least in their own minds they go back home and say, look, what's going on here? Please remember that. So the role of parents is very important. I think I already covered that. Look at this here. This again from Proverbs, from the Bible. Very applicable, very nice. Start children off on the way they should go, and when they are older, children, start with the child. If you control the ones are children, when they are old, they will not deviate from. They will follow. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of Alberta sex education. I, 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 I printed some for you. Okay, so basically what I have, I'm not going to go over it, but I'm going to leave it to you to read it. And basically, it says grade 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and grade 10, to 12, and so on. So this is what the school is giving them. The very unfortunate part is, I, I did went through it personally, and I can summarize it in four areas. Yeah, we, here we start from grade 4. And in Ontario, we start from grade 1. Unfortunately. Okay, so basically, if you look at the program, you'll find it's focused on basically four things. The first one is normalizing gays and lesbian issues. Gays and lesbian are okay. According to the Bible, it's not. We're not going to get into that, but that's what they are teaching them. Yes, this, this curriculum applies to the Catholic and public schools or the schools? I think it's public and Catholic school as well. So in Catholic schools are not single too? There are singular, are supported by the government. And this is yeah. done by the government. They do? Yeah, I know they do, but you know, is it the same curriculum or it's a little bit like Yes, according, yes. It's all according. So what is the difference now between Catholic and non-Catholic in this school? Huh? What's the difference? I thought, I thought Catholic is getting a little bit more conservative and we have a little bit more control, but it looks like you know, we're losing this. The only thing different is they pay uh, other work to start with. <laughs> <laughs> and then kids in no, Catholic. Actually, 
Is there any spoiler? Yeah, of course. You want to? Yeah. I think not only that, but also in the public school as well. Yeah, yeah. Public school, any school, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Any school, they will send you a letter asking, is it okay to talk to your kids about so and so. Unfortunately, I got four people in our church. And I asked them, did you get that letter? They said, yes. Did you do anything about it? I said, no. <laughs> Please. But, and I come to it. but my question is, when your kid come to you and say, we need your permission for the school to talk to us and so on, you need to follow up with the kid. Okay, what did they talk about today? What does he say? What do you think of what they say? Yeah, what I'm saying is, try to take it as a golden opportunity to talk to your kids. See how are they reacting. To what they heard. Yes. For like for example, my son is very very sick last year, and he gets a consent for the school to go back. They attend and they have the sessions. All they were teaching is giving the students an idea how to stay when they will go out. What is the future? What is what is the name of the uh, uh, human body? But you are lucky. The problem is, and that's where the difference between the public and the Catholic. The public, you have all kinds of people that can talk openly about any scandal. They don't follow, again, correct me if I'm wrong, they don't follow the curriculum 100%. They can deviate, they can support very much the gays and the and, and, and so on. In the Catholic schools, they are much more concerned. They don't support that issue openly. Because again, most of the people there are Christians and so on. Is that correct? Sure, please. Um,
approaches that, of course, are realistic and matches our church needs. Number two, and of course, control unwanted pregnancy, control of spread of STDs and diseases and so on, those, and safer sex. That's it. That's all we're going to focus on. Which all of them does not match our church values or beliefs. So don't depend on the school. Remember, we said that in the, in the very beginning. Don't depend on the school to teach your kids a very sensitive topic like that that can impact on their future and on their marriage and their life. What does safe sex mean? Of course, there is nothing called safe sex. So uh, basically, you have no baby, no disease, that's okay. That's it. That's the name of it. Of course, that's not right. Maybe that you don't have this, but how about your feeling? How about somebody taking advantage of you as a girl or as a boy? Think about those things. So, how about your soul? How about your our Christian values? And so on. So, these things are don't count in their own opinion or in uh, System the only safe sex is to wait until you get married. And that's how the message we have to pass on to our kids in a way they will understand. Very important. And we'll give you those words. I'll give you those words. Look at this. This is actually part of the Ontario system. Ontario, uh, they are starting this September and they are starting grade one. Teach kids in grade one. Great one, teach them proper names, which I have a lot of problem. The problem is the teachers don't stick to what is written. They start expanding depending on their beliefs. That is the problem. That is the problem. Not only in their beliefs, but also on the surrounding and the environment. I'll give you an example. Uh, the teacher was talking about all this. So, a girl put her hand up and she said, Is it true if I rub a certain part of my body, I get nice feet? So the teacher said, Yes. Of course, she took it as it is and went to her mom. She said, Look, the teacher said this. Of course, next day, the mom and dad went to meet the principal and said, Hey, what are you teaching our kids? You can't do that. I said, Look, your daughter asked a question. And I have to respond in a proper way. And I said, yes. So she asked the question. So again, sometimes the, the teacher, or the poor guy, or the poor girl, they are asking a question. You have to ask it, you have to answer it honestly, and you cannot, you know, deviate it, and so on. So we have to be very careful. Look at this. And play 101. Uh, look at this. Encourage masturbation as a pleasurable way to learn about your own body and so on. It's terrible. So we really need to start, and they start in grade one now, and I'm sure next year they're going to be in grade one too. That's the way it's going, for sure. So we need to be prepared, we need to be ahead of the game. That's it. We need to. So we wanna, we, what we're doing here in our classes, what's going to get in grade four? We're going to teach them grade 3. Then they go to school with the information that they're going to get from the school to add, add to it the Christian values. Then they know what they're going to learn from school and, of course, mix it with our Christian values. So, most people will agree to this, but most people will not do it. So let us all agree that prevention is better than cure. Try to prevent your son or daughter getting into this. Very important. And make sure that they get the right information first. So what I'm saying is sexuality education is the answer. I'm going to clarify what the word sexuality means. Uh, what we or most schools and actually our church in Ontario is sexual education. We hear our group the word sexuality. Because if, if you really think about it, what we are teaching is sexuality. It's looking at the whole thing. 
from biology to sociology to psychology to sociology and even philosophical value in the moral and ethical and theoretical or theological part and so on. So we're going to cover all this in our classes to you in the right time. So why Christian sexuality education? Sexuality is an integral part of our personality. Sex is a very important part of our life. And we need to, God created that in us. And we need to respect that. Unfortunately, many of us came up with some bad views about this, but we're going to clarify this. Achieving sexual health is a lifelong process. You start now and progress with your kids as you grow up. Many of the sex sources may have more negatives than positive. We need to be aware of that, so we're going to reverse that in the church teaching. The goal is to help youth have a positive, healthy view of sexuality. And we need to start when they are six years old. We need to give them medically accurate sexual education is basically an investment. One thing that I discovered and the top queen is going to give a lecture for about two hours on self-esteem. Self-esteem has a major impact on our kids' overall reaction to sexuality. Look at this. If you have a, or if your child has a low self-esteem, or not very high one, basically they want affirmation from others. They are a good boy. You are being loved, so another boy or girl can approach them. That's why, right. very important. They have self doubts about what they believe in, so it's easy for somebody to fill that gap. So it is very, very important to make sure that our kids have high self esteem. And it's easy, believe me. And many give actually that lecture to uh, our sex education team and everyone was quite happy and she's gonna repeat it for for everybody so hopefully we this will be the second lecture we will see later on. So please remember it's never too late to start building your child self-esteem. There is a lot of resources in the internet how to build your child self-esteem. It's extremely important, especially for sexuality approval of yourself and of course relationships and so on. That's it. So now I'm going to summarize what is the church doing for you or for our kids to help you. I'm going to give you a progress report of what we did so far. What we did, we divided the church into basically six different levels. So these six different levels, kindergarten, anything before Grade 1, and then grade 1 to 3, 4 to 6, 7 to 9, 10 to 12, and university and graduate job. So those are the six different grouping. Because again, the message that we're going to give will depend on the age of your child. If it is grade 1, it's different than grade 7, different than course university. So basically, we have 12 working team, and again, every one of those groups have two, a male and female. And what I'm really looking for, I'm looking for more people to work with us. Two is not enough, they are working like hell. Honestly, they are working very hard. So I want to make it three to each, so I'm asking you at the very end, you can volunteer sometime, I will really appreciate it. So we have 12 are working now, uh, supported by three, myself, uh, another person that's helping me with secretarial work, and also we need somebody for the website. We can develop a website where all those presentations will be posted on the website. All the answers and questions and answers also are posted on the website, so it will help you. I also have an advisory team where people that review what we are producing. So we are producing a document for each for each one of those 
groups who are producing larva gland acid. This is developed already about 100 pages. So I need somebody to read those 100 pages. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Does it match the age? Is it appropriate to the age? That's very important too. Again, they uh, do everything from the psychological point of view. Abuna was another two or three abonas going to include from basically the biblical and the church values and so on. Uh, actually, so, uh, also, we have somebody that also, I think, will, uh, basically would be reviewed from the biblical point of view and so on. So, this is our advice. So, our goal is to give you the knowledge, not only the knowledge, the skill to handle it with the kids. How can you talk to the kids about this? How can you start discussion? How can you build a relationship with your kids? How can you talk about it? When can you talk about it? And so on. Give you some tools and some materials, handouts, and some things as well. So this will enable you to teach the kids. So our dream as a church to help you think positively about sex as an adult and then hopefully that will be passed on to the kids. Take care of their bodies and be comfortable with their skin. If I am a woman or I am a girl, I have to be proud of being a girl. I was talking to, to one girl and she said, uh, the menstruation is really a curse. I said, what? Who, who told you that? Of course it's not. It's the most normal thing because you're going to bring a baby. That's, that's how God created us. That's God's design. That's, we need to keep that in mind. That's God's design. Enables them to make well-informed and responsible sexual decisions. If I do this, what's the end result? If I do this, what's the end result? Form a healthy relationship with the kids. That is very important. So how am I going to help you? We have actually four different ways of helping you. One, provide specialized sex education lectures as required. So here there is about nine of them, we're going to discuss that in a minute. Nine of them provide monthly specific group lectures. So every month we're going to have a two hour presentation here or somewhere else, uh, one o'clock, uh, after Sunday or some, on Sunday, for different grouping. So you will have one teacher would be teaching all these groups in different ways and different approaches. Uh, again, here we will do that later. We were thinking of teaching the kids, but we are putting all of them. The main reason, of course, they can ask questions and then the teacher will say something in good school and say, this is what the Sunday school teacher said. Maybe the kid will misinterpret it. So we're going to depend on you as parents to do that first and then we'll see. Provide, Sakura promised that we will provide some special courses and Christian biblical approach to sex education and so on. So the monthly session will be two hours for each group. The two hours is divided actually into three sections. The first session is half an hour parents to share their experience with everybody else. Let's say we have 20 parents. We're going to tell them to do this with your kids or share this with your kids and whatever it is. Next time they will come and say, we tried to do that, it did work very good. Or actually it didn't work. What did you say? How did you say it? And so on. So the first half an hour is getting feedback from the parents as a result of interacting with your kids. The second part is one hour where we're going to give you new information. Okay? So the new information is represented, you can go to page, the set, like this divided into sections. The first one is a practice sex education, four pages. After that, you have Another four pages. That is the curriculum that we came up as a group. So basically, 
we have general presentation for all ages. So it would be for everybody from grade one to university. And we have nine topics. The first one is Christianity, spirituality, and sexuality. Abuna will give this one. The second one is self-esteem, where Mary will explain what is self-esteem, where does it come from, and how can we basically encourage it in our kids, and also in others. Whatever she's going to say basically applies to us as well. Uh, and how does that impact on sex, drugs, peer pressure, dating, media, uh, substance abuse, drugs, and so on. The third lecture is Parents role, as a Role Model. I will be teaching this one. And basically I'm going to talk to you about how can you be a great example for your kids in all aspects of life. I think this is again something quite important for us as a parent. How to talk to your kids about sexual issues. I'm going to uh, do that as well. Uh, again, Dr. Bahat will cover five and six. How to how to talk to your kids about drugs. I think that's another major issue that happens. And sexuality, transmitted diseases, it will be also covered. Number seven, how to talk to your kids about gay and lesbian and transsexual issues. Uh, Susan is kind enough. She's the most knowledgeable when it comes to this. So she's preparing a two hour presentation. What is it? Where does it come from? Where did it start? And it gives you an idea and then I'm going to give you some questions and see what is the right answer and so on. And the last two, kids save, kids and safe internet use and abuse. Uh, I'm going to give a lecture. Imagine you combine eight and nine in one lecture, two hours, uh, pornography and your children and so on. So those are the general uh, lectures that we talked about right here. Okay, so let us see what we're going to do. So basically the action plan is we are preparing the presentations. So you will have actually two presentations. One is a written presentation will be on the internet for each specific group. Kindergarten, one to three, four to six, seven to nine, nine and, and so on. So that's one. Another one would be the presentations, which is a summary with lots of examples that will be presented to each specific group. Again, this will be also recorded and it will be on the internet for the parents that can not or do not have the time to attend. We're also going to have a special area in the internet for questions and answer sheets for all age groups as well. So starting September, this is basically what we're going to do. Uh, Abuna will start it, and we don't have the date yet, and then followed by May, followed by me, and so on. So we'll try to compress this in about three months. So September, October, November, and maybe December, and then we'll start sexual and, uh, sexuality education for each specific group starting January. So those are the things that we believe it will prepare you as a parent to assume the role of an educator or a teacher. <coughs> Think about that. So as we go on here, you are getting more information, you are more knowledgeable, and the more knowledgeable we are, believe me, the kids will respect you. Because if you ask a question, if you don't know, you're going to get, you know, just ignore it. And they are good at that, believe me. So you need to be knowledgeable, you need to talk to them at their level. Now I have some questions for you. Any questions? I, I, I'll respond to your question later. I'll respond to them. Okay. Sex education delivery. We, we wanted originally to see if we can teach parents only, children only, children and parents in the same class, or children and parents in different classes. What do you think would be the best approach? Fourth one. Fourth one? Number three. Number three, I think. Number three. Number three. Number three. 
the best one, I, I have two actually two programs that I, I borrowed from other organizations. I think the best one was children and parents in different classes. Well, what we did, what they did is they get, uh, they do it actually very nicely. So we can do it here. We do it in the weekend. So they bring the kids, women by themselves, men by themselves. So they talk to women about how to approach their kids, and then they to men how to approach their boys, and they teach them, and they let the parents go and have supper with their kids, and have games with their kids, and they enjoy the discussion because again you are doing something that your kid would love. So they are much more receptive to your ideas, and that's what makes it. So I, I don't know we, what we're going to do. We're going to start with parents on Sunday, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. The second question is: Is there any need for adult sex education? Sure. Not only related to your kids, but related to your sexuality as well. Okay. I, 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 do I get like how many is interested in something like that? Four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's cancer. So I think <laughs> I know I, I, somebody was strong enough or brave enough in our church last time I gave this lecture. And he stood up and said, look, we need help. And I said we need to, and that's why I added this, he said, we need to talk to us about our own sexuality, our relationship. What does the Bible say? Why is it saying? Why do we create? Why do we create our own? And that, it makes sense to me, but it obviously doesn't make sense to you. Anyway, let's move on. Should we include other addictions like gambling, alcohol, or yeah. yeah. Is this the kids or the I'm asking a question. Whatever you're going to tell me, I'm going to include or not. Yes? 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 Okay. Okay. Are you comfortable talking to your kids? Did you ever talk to your kids about this? Please talk to me. I, 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 I need to learn. Yes. In general, yes. We are comfortable, but we are. We started to talk, yes, but we are not comfortable. Don't tell me that we are comfortable talking to our kids about it. We are not comfortable, but we, we had to, so we started. You started. <laughs> okay, I, I, I need to I need to clarify talk. What I meant is discussion rather than talk. You can't say, hey, come here and come, 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 come here. Here is a message. No, it has to be back and forth. So we need to have, and in order to have a discussion about a sensitive product, uh, topic like this. You need to have a good relationship. So you need to start now. Because I, I, I tried this with another group and say it doesn't work. Because the parent doesn't talk to the kids in, under normal circumstances. So now how are we going to talk about sex with them? The parents themselves, I'm going to go back to this, where actually uh, he said, I am not comfortable about sex issue anyway. How can I pass it on? If I'm going to pass it on, I'm going to pass on the discomfort. It's very important. Yes, sir. Sometimes the parents they have a misconception, uh, and uh, I think you have a great story about the life of the mom and change the picture. Jury. So if the parents have a wrong idea, then they can't really teach it if they don't understand it or if they feel it's angry or wrong. We can't talk about this. Then you can't really get into the kids' mentality and explain the right thing. Um, it has to do with our culture and our background. And there was a nice story, I wish you could repeat that story, about the life of the Do you remember that? So if you can see that one. Yeah. 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 What are your concerns, your worries? What keeps you up at night when it comes to your kids? 
talk to me. Okay? I, I need to hear from you. You can talk for an hour and a half. Yes, sir. First, uh, you don't know, you know, you know exactly you know. how far did he know or she know about it. So you have to figure out you know, how far did he go in depth without telling you. So we are going to find out <coughs> And that's the main thing. Good question. The question is, I don't know how far or how much my kid knows. The only way to find out is what? Okay. To be a good listener, you start and shut up. And listen. Create an environment where your kid is comfortable to talk about his or her experience. If he does something wrong, don't get upset. Don't get mad. Yes, and so on, and what happened after that, and what did you do, why did that happen, who told you about that, and ask the question and wait for them to talk. So please, this will start in January, so I want you to do that from now on. I want you to start developing a good relationship with your kids. Start spending some time in at home. Like I remember me and Mary were George and Jolene were small. We used to spend one hour every night sitting on the floor talking about everything and under the sun. Talk about the Bible, we pray for 15 minutes, see the spell out, say, what did you do at school? How did, did you help anybody today? And so on. So we need to develop that back and forth discussion where kids will be comfortable. Otherwise, it will not happen. Otherwise, they will not talk to you. So you need to develop a relationship. And of course, you have to have a good relationship with your wife or husband in order to do that because they mirror you. They mirror your relationship with your wife and your husband. They mirror the respect that you have for your wife or husband. They mirror that. They may not say anything, but it's recorded here. So if you want your daughter or son to grow to be a good husband or a good wife, please be a role model for them. Because they will grow up to be like you. Yes, another question. <laughs> Okay, 
So what does too much mean? Anyway, we start discussing. And I told her, this is normal. Your husband is a normal person. God created us different. We have different sex drives. Usually men have high sex drive. Usually women have lower sex drive. She, because she thought that her husband is a sex magic or something. I said, what's going on with this guy? That's the only thing he think of. I said, this is normal. This is how God created us. And so, she, she's mad for, I don't know, she had, she told me she has three kids. And I think the first one was nine years old. She has been mad for nine years old. And she, this bothered her very much. But she said, wow, I didn't know that. I said, this is what it is. So, we need to talk about these issues. Then you know it is normal for husbands and wives to, and then I tell you the only way is to talk about it, discuss it, and see what does he want, what does she want, what is the balance between the two. That's the way it works. Yes? Also, there is healthy and unhealthy when it comes to sexual relationship between the husband and the wife. It's not because men, this is a drive or hormone like boys or other, and women are different, but in the sex, in marital relationship, get affected with the relationship. Correct. Together. Correct. There's a resentment to be built out of that, and when she finds herself like very low, I mean, self esteem that have been very harmed, so we need to go back to what's happening between the two. True. True. That, uh, that is the psychology side of it. Yeah. Okay? But, but what I'm trying to say is that we have, we are different. God created a different. And we need to respect it. And as I always say, but what happened if God created both men and women have the same high sex drive? Do you think what happened? What do you think what happened? <laughs> we'll stay home all night. That's it. Not gonna go out. We know work. All the shops were closed. No, seriously. What happened if both of them have both sex drive? So God created that for a reason. Of course, I respect Mary's opinion. Like usually say, sex start in the kitchen. What does that mean? That's exactly what Mary is saying. So that's another topic. But I, again, I certainly agree with zero. Okay, let's move on. We are, we're getting out of the topic now. Okay. Okay, another question that is very important, and I want you to ask yourself this question. He says, does your child have the freedom to talk to you? Do you create the environment for him or her to talk to you? That's important. I don't want to answer this question, but I want to ask you some of those questions. Am I creating the environment that my son or daughter, when they come to me, they feel comfortable talking and they leave me comfortable too? Or they make me leave me more comfortable? And I give you that example when we started the worst example. Here's another question which is very good. How would you respond to your daughter saying it's okay to have heavy kissing and wetting as long as we don't have intercourse? The problem is in, in kids' idea is maybe according to the Bible no intercourse. But kissing is a, an actual sexual activity. I remember when I don't know, it's so maybe you don't tell you, he asked the same question. He said, is kissing wrong? If I kiss my boyfriend, is that okay? I said, would you kiss your mother the same way or your father the same way? No way, is okay? Something wrong with it. I don't know. What, what does he mean by kissing again? Everybody's different. So we need to be aware of this. What are the few practical things that you can do to protect your child, purity and innocence. Are you doing that? We're going to answer those questions. Are you aware of what the Bible says about sex? There is actually a very, very extremely nice lecture uh, given by Dr. Boyle. Dr. Beck. Maybe better. Two, two, one and a half hour each. Beautiful. Cover the Bible from every angle, give good examples, and he mentioned several things about priests and what the priests will 
say that is wrong and so on, but he, he was very much on the wall. I will, I will try to get the address and I will get you the material and hopefully you can read it or listen to it. He is an exceptionally good speaker as well. Very, very, very wrong. Would you want your kids to learn about sex the way you did? Discuss it. Hopefully, this will be on the internet. Uh, if he's not here or she's not here, listen to him, also you. And start asking those questions. See, come up with a plan for your kids. Your daughter asks this question What's wrong with having sex before marriage? Can you answer that question?
to help themselves and help their kids. It's 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 really a good project, and I believe it. And of course, the payment is extraordinary. You are guaranteed a job for life, or for a long time. There is no layoffs or anything. Like that. So once you work with us, we'll be happy to have you. We have a great team. We meet every second week. So I have a piece of paper. I will ask you if you are interested to give me your name and then we can talk and so on. Okay. Al, do you have any questions? Before I finish. Yes. أنا بلاقي صعوبة إن أنا أتكلم مع أولادي في السكشوال إديوكيشن عشان أنا أصلاً مش مقتنعة باللي بيحصل يعني يعني فور إكزامبل مثلاً لو أنا في الشغل أنا بشتغل في المعمل باخد بلاد ولقيت ليزبن أو جاي أنا بقرف أشوفه يعني أصلاً التربية اللي إحنا تربيناها حاسة إن إحنا صعب إن إحنا نقتنع بحاجة تانية عكسها بعد ما وصلنا للسن ده فأنا أقدر أقتنع بنتي بل هي عايزه تسمعه قد تفهمني يعني مثلا انا مره اتكلمت مع بنتي في الهاي سكول بقول لها انا شايفه ان الليزبيان والجين دول بيعملوا شر عظيم قدام ربنا دي انا مقتنعه بيه هي بتقولي لا يا ماما كلامك غلط دول ناس عاديين وهم اتولدوا كده الهرمونات بتاعتهم كده قلت لها لا ما فيش حد اتولد كده زي ما ابونا مره جاي لي البيت وقال لنا كلنا انا وولادي وجوزي ربنا خلق ادم وايف لوت ادم وستيف انا سمعتها منه وعجبتني قوي بصراحه فانا قلت لها مالي لا يعني يا حبيبتي مفيش حاجه كده مفيش حاجه طبيه كده هم عايزين يعملوا الشر فبيقنعوا نفسهم وبيقنعوا الناس اللي حواليهم ان ده طبيعي بس ده مش طبيعي فانا زي اقنع اولادي او اتكلم معاهم بحاجه انا نفسي مش مقتنعه بيها انا بلاقي الشر انا بلاقي صعوبه في كده We did, we did not ask for that. What we are saying is, it, it, you, you need to remember it's a fact of life. Okay? It's a fact of life that they do exist. And the Charter of Rights gives them that right. But don't, what I'm saying is, don't impose your ideas on me. If you want to be gay, that's fine. It's okay. But even, what are you doing? المشكلة أنا لما بقول لبنتي حاجة أو بنصح أو بتكلم معاها هي بتقولي ماما تفكيرك ده غلط أنت بتتكلمي ب ب بالتفكير معتقدات بتاعت مصر فأنا بلاقي في الآخر زي ما بيقولوا كده Great and respect presentation. I have two hours, but lots of questions in my case. And how about if you tell her you are wrong, she's not going to take it. So you need to have a different approach to talk to her. Actually, okay? Because again, I want you to remember that she got that from the school almost on a daily basis. So we need to have a different approach. And we have an approach. And we'll share that with you. Okay? Actually, actually, a few weeks ago, a woman and father called me from. Sudden, he gave about four hour lecture proving from the science that uh, uh, homosexuality is not by is not by it's not genetic is not uh, something yeah, that is a choice know, yeah it's 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 all mental pain that yeah. they, and you all you know but we need to summarize okay. 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 Also, it's online. Online. It's online. Yeah, yeah. I should check, but but what we are trying, we are trying to develop a new approach. Okay. 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 In this answer, step one, two, three, how to approach, how to answer, so we don't get different cultures to be involved in. Exactly. Different That's exactly our plan. You have a table, you have a question, an answer, and those answers will be reviewed by at least two priests, uh, and his grace will support it and so on. 
So that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Any other questions or yes? How about that? Usually it is true. Most, most of the time, boys are with boys and girls are with girls. For, I, I read uh, an article about this, but mothers can be successful in talking with boys as well. How old? 14. 14. I, I, I don't know the answer for that one, but I'll find the answer for that one. The younger, the better, of course. The younger, and that's why I'm asking, please invest a lot of time talking to your kids when they are younger. You have much more control, and they. I want you to remember when the kids are younger, they consider to be God. They trust you. Once they start getting into 14, and they know, I have my own life. No, no, it's never too late. I didn't say it's never too late. It's never too late. It needs a different approach. Being yeah. It's never too late for any age, even the other. And the key here is how to develop a system for good. We're not going to go over the wallet. You're close to your daughter and you tell me how to do This is good. Then tell you are a mama or as a mama or tell you to tell you to tell you. It doesn't mean if you try to talk with a boy, you will refuse. It depends on when and how to say it and in what circumstances you can develop a certain system at home. On a daily basis, I'm going to say that. Say, let's talk about our day. By the way, can't make it the night for all you know as a family and talk about everything. But, but maybe the question is, can we, I had that question before, can we talk to the boys and girls at the same time? I, they don't have to. Yeah, exactly. They have a general conversation about the right touching, the right interaction and communication. What did we see? Yeah. What does the Bible say in general? You get encouraged in who was. I always yes, sir. And Baba is in the community. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you about the question. 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 إن هو بيقول لي دي ثقافة مصرية ما هي الفكرة نفسها إن أنا أكلمه إن أنا متربي كده ده غلط ده مش صح لأن التربية يعني ولادنا قبل كده قالوا لنا ما أنتوا سبتوا الثقافة اللي أنتوا تربيتوا فيها وجيتوا خدتوا ثقافة الغرب فالرد أساسا هيبقى موجود طبعا الحل الصحيح إن أنا هوجه هكلمه من وجهة نظر كتابية البايبل هتصدم بيه في حاجة صعبة جدا إن هو هيجي يقول لي اشمعنا دي اللي انت متمسك بيها في البايبل طب ما انت في حاجات كتير جدا مستبيح فيها في البيت في حاجات كتير سواء في صلاة سواء في عبادة سواء في أسرار سواء 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 اشمعنا دي اللي انت جيت وقلت لي ان دي اساسا مهمة جدا ولازم ان انت تبطلها ودي زي ما احنا بنقول لفظة قال دلوقتي شر عظيم المرأة الزانية ما راحت للمسيح ما قالهاش دي شر عظيم ده عاملها معاملة عادية جدا احنا مكبرين الخطيئة قوي فعشان كده ولادنا يعني عمالين هم مستغربين احنا ليه مهتمين بالموضوع قوي كده في حين عيالنا اساسا في منهم ممكن يكون عندهم فكرة الحادي ممكن عندهم كدب وعندهم ما لهمش اي علاقة بربنا خالص واحنا مش, مش في الدنيا لكن اول ما بيجي يتصدم بالخطيئة دي لا احنا بنقوم ومش بنوعه التاني ليه؟ لأن هو 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 شايف إن الموضوع أساساً إحنا أساساً تربيتنا الطريقة اللي إحنا تربينا بيها الثقافة بتاعتنا جاية عندها أنا حساسية زيادة ناحية الموضوع ده في حين إن عند ربنا الموضوع مختلف شوي الدنيا أساساً واحدة الخطية تفصل عن ربنا أي كانت ففكرة وجهة النظر الكتابية لازم إحنا نكون عايشين الأول الكتاب نبتدي إن إحنا نديهم كل التفاصيل بتاعه. 
before, the thing is, when your son is here, and you are here, two big differences, and you try to convince him to come to your way, you will never come. So you have to go here, and see where is he coming from, and then bring him with you. So I did it actually here, now I have to do it verbally, I have to see how can we talk to him, and the worst thing, please guys, the worst thing you can do is say, for Masr, we will do it. Or we will do Masr, we will do it. Or we will do it in the church. When you say that, they will do like this, right away. And we are not actually for Masr now, we are here. So they will start even more tension Let's talk, and I like, uh, I want to say that actually, and you said it very well, is we need to use the Bible as our reference. And we need to use the Bible in a very sensitive way. Because I, I did that, I say, or, or one of the parents told me exactly what you said, is how come you don't pray every day? How come you don't study this in the Bible? How come we... Don't uh, read, read a bear every day. How come we don't go to church? And say, oh, and now we're gonna stop before this. So if you're gonna refer to the Bible, make sure that you are following the Bible. Not only this part. Good, very good question. And we'll find the answer. Anybody any a question here again? Yeah. 
أو كلام شائع جدا جدا. لما هتكلم عارف النهاية أنا ممكن أسمع لك كلمتين صعبين أسمع لك حاجة بالطريقة. فأنا أنا بقرأ إيه؟ أقصد الطريق إن أنا أصاحب الحب. أقدم الحب. لأن الطبيعي لما أقدم الحب أكيد هو نفسه هيلاقي إن أنا صاحبه بقى مش ماما وبابا أنا بقيت صديق. بالظبط. فمن حلالي مش هيسيبني مش همشي مش هيقول لي مش عايز أتكلم بالعكس هيقول لي أنت صاحبي أنت بيقرأ كتير. I agree with you, but he still can live. This this age is the most difficult age, and he and he will. He said how he she just to prove that I can do it, whether he agrees or not. That is puberty. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. So we have to keep that in mind and be persistent. Yes. It's a very important thing. I mean, if I don't know why, 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 if I don't know why. بلاش تلاقي شخص. مش عارف ليه صح ولا لا. يعني انا انا طالما هو هيسالني ليه انت بتقول ده صح او غلط لو انا مش عارف ارده وعارف ارد كويس وعارف اقنعه هبقى انا كده خسرت بقى لا انت انت تقول له اي دونت نو بت ليت مي اسك سمبوري اوس اور ليت اس توك تو ابو فور اكزامبل ليتس جو تو ذا اور بريست هي از مورج اوفر ذيس اند هي هاز ليسن تو ذوز كويشنز 100 تايمز بيفور فروم ديفرنت بيرنس اند ديفرنت فاميليز Let's go and talk to him. Would you agree whatever our opponent is saying to him? A white line and so on. It just, we have to find, we have lots of questions and lots of answers. We'll give you that. Any other question? I just want to finish. So basically, what I'm asking to you is let the church help you, please. Let them help you. In other words, I will ask you to join us every month. We will have a very interesting session. For two hours, we will cover a specific topic. I have the list in your handout. See those lists, and uh, Abu will need to decide. Abu will need to decide. Will need to decide on the date. It will be in a regular basis, the first, maybe the first Sunday of every month. We will have it here, and uh, it will be common for everybody. And hopefully, we will address those issues. Please let other people know. But like today was over four or five hundred people in the church. We only have 80 or 40, 40 people going the way around. So please spread the word. Uh, we are here to help you. We are here to answer your questions. Just give us an opportunity. Any other questions or comments? So I can have a piece of paper here if you, if you are interested to help. Please give me your name and your phone number and we'll talk. Thank you very much.